Hey guys, Rusty over here, and last time I made a wild guide was over a month ago. So we're getting back to the roots. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to solo normal Tomb of Sargeras. Now guys, this shit is really easy, let's be honest. I did this as a item level 400 Feral Druid with decent Azerite gear, but the thing about Feral Druid, at least for me, is that I suck a donkey cock at Feral Druid. Like, this box of cheeses could play Feral Druid better than me. Guys, if I could do this as item level 400 Feral Druid with no idea what I'm doing, you could do it too. So, let's get started with the guide, shall we? First boss, we are going to be moving on to Goroth. Now, as he is the first boss, he's actually going to be very easy. I know, surprising. However, he does have one mechanic that can still kill you, but I'm going to go over all the mechanics just so you know them all. So, first things first, he's going to spawn pillars on the ground like that. These little cracks spawn on the ground and pillars shoot up from them. Don't, don't stand in them. Now, these pillars are important, but they can be destroyed. He has two circles he puts on you. One is a crashing comment, which just puts a dot on you. The other one is the tank debuff. When those expire, if you're, if they're in the range of the, what's it called, the pillars, it'll destroy them. You don't want that, because when he puts the green arrow on you there, the shattering star, he's going to send this ball at you. You need to hide behind the pillar when that comes out. What the tank debuff does, you take 100% increased damage when it expires. When the shattering star, if that doesn't hit a pillar and just hits you, it puts a very nasty dot on you, pretty much to the point where you're just going to die. So again, when the shattering star comes out, a green arrow spawns, you'll see it. He's going to shoot a ball at you. You need to hide behind the pillar. Two other things that destroy pillars are going to be the infernal burning. Again, when that comes out, hide behind it. If you fail that, you're going to get knocked back and again, get a nasty dot on you. You don't want that. That's no goo. Another thing that could destroy the pillars is the boss walking on top of them. So just don't let the boss walk on top of them. You'll be perfectly fine. Again, guys, as this is the first boss, he's pretty much a fucking joke. You just need to hide behind the pillars before the Shattering Star comes out and before the Infernal Burning comes out. And don't destroy them with the Crashing Comets and the Tank Debuff. Go ahead, dick the boss dirty, get no loot, because Blizzard refuses to put Legacy Loot Mode for previous expansion content. It has to be two expansions before... Demonic Inquisition. Now, originally, I thought this boss was going to be completely unsolable. Um, strictly because I thought when you go into Bellax Cage using your extra action button, we'll get more into that in a second, I kind of figured the bosses would despawn. They don't, which, thank God, otherwise this boss would be completely unsolable. Now, the main mechanic of this fight, you can see um, below my stance bars, you got that red bar slowly filling up. Essentially, when you get hit by any of the boss's abilities, by the way, you can interrupt the pangs of guilt there. I don't know why I'm not. You can do it. So you're going to gain Torment, which fills that bar up. Uh, by the way, Scythe Sweep gives you the most amount of Torment. Once you get full Torment, use your extra action button. You're going to go into Bellax Cage. You're going to have this Tormented Soul. Just start DPSing it. It's going to spawn those orange orbs. Once your bar is back to zero, you'll get another extra action button that'll pop you out. Um, the only other thing to note is that each boss has an ultimate ability. You can see there, Bellac was casting Fell Squall. You're going to see in a second after he does this Scythe Sweep, Atrigan is going to start casting Bone Saw. If you start attacking the bosses while they're doing that special ability, you're going to gain a metric fuck ton of torment. So, guys, you don't want to do that. Also, try not to stand near them while they're doing it. Essentially, at this point, I stopped giving a shit because, let's be honest, guys, it takes two seconds to go into Bellax Cage and stop and drop your torment. So, you know, fuck it, attack them during that if you want because, basically, guys, this fight can be summed up as you get full torment, you go into the cage, you gain the orbs, you go back out. That's it. There's really no high damage at any point in this fight. If you're doing this at a decent item level, you're going to be perfectly fine. That's it. Demonic Inquisition. Get a full bar. Go down. Clear it. Come back up. Done. Simple. Moving on to the second hardest boss currently is going to be Harjitan. Now, mechanically, he's a joke of a boss. However, he's a big DPS check. You can see in the top right of my screen there, he's going to keep applying this stacking dot on you. And you're not going to be able to drop this unless you're a hunter or a warlock or something with a pet. Now, this is where the DPS check comes in. You need to kill him before that dot kills you. So as soon as the pull starts, pop potion, lust, everything. Blow your load all over his face and kill him. Now, the other thing he's going to do, he's going to spawn these adds. Guys, the adds really don't do anything. They'll obviously do slight damage to you, which you're already taking a ton of damage. So if you can, try and dot them up. Try and passively cleave them down. However, if it's going to take away from a lot of your damage on the boss, I recommend ignoring them. Now, you can see there he's going to do another thing called unchecked rage. Once his energy bar hits 100, he's going to do this ginormous frontal cone that 
back when this was current, the entire raid needed to soak. So now when he does it, it's basically going to be a huge hit on you. If you have personal cooldowns, which most classes should, try and use it for those unchecked raids, especially when you get to later on in the fight. Whereas you there, I think it did like something 30% of my health and almost killed me. Um, luckily, Feral Druid, I got two survival instincts that help with that. So essentially, Harger 10, kill the boss before he kills you. Simple enough. Kind of. Now, we're moving on to Sisters of the Moon. Uh, phase 1, guys, I recommend not using your DPS cooldowns. In fact, I don't just recommend it. You probably really should not use it, as you need them for Phase 3 for the burn phase. Now, myself being the idiot I am, I did use them on pull. I almost regret that later on in Phase 3. Anyways, the only other thing to note for Phase 1 is going to be the Moon Burn. This actually happens throughout the fight. Um, basically, when you get Moon Burn or the... What's it called? You get a debuff, I forgot what it's called. The Moon Glaive, that you need to cross from the light to the dark or the dark to the light, and that'll drop the debuff. The moon burn is just a dot you want to get off you. The other one, the moon glaive, is basically a debuff that she puts on you. You take no healing or reduced healing. Essentially, it's not great. You want to get rid of that. Essentially, you get rid of those two debuffs. You just cross from light to dark. Now, the only thing to note that you didn't see there since I used my cooldowns in phase one is that if you get targeted by the incorporeal shot, essentially when the moon becomes full, should they do the open ability, you're going to take a ton of damage. So just use a personal cooldown when it comes out a defensive. You should be fine if it even does that much damage. Now, in phase two for the ultimate ability, you're going to get two types of shields. One on you, one on the boss. The one on you needs to be healed up. The one on the boss, you need to DPS through. Now, if that goes off, essentially it's going to do this burst of damage. Now, I never had the burst of damage come out, so I don't know if it'll one-shot you. Back then in the raid, obviously it did one-shot you. But to be honest, guys, there's no reason those shields shouldn't come off. There are very little numbers on them. You could get rid of them. And to be honest, if you don't, they probably don't do that much damage. The only other thing to note for Phase 2 is going to be she's going to spawn the Moon Talon ad. It just does like a screech, which just does small damage. Guys, the ad is pretty much irrelevant. Dot it up, cleave it down. They can you can pretty much ignore it. Now, Phase 3. This is one you, as soon as Priestess, I'm not going to pronounce that name. I'm not embarrassing myself more than I already did. I'm not pronouncing that name. As soon as this bitch spawns, blow your load again all over her face. Pop every single cooldown you have and nuke her down. What she does is kind of like Harjitan. She's going to put a stacking dot on you and you cannot drop this. So again, you need to kill her before she kills you. She's also going to do an ability called Lunar Beacon, which is a debuff on you. Once that expires, you're going to start putting those circles on the ground. Now, standing in those circles, you're going to take ticking damage. By the way, you still have the Moonbird debuffs going out. Make sure you're dropping those. You stand in those circles, you're going to be take ticking damage, and you're going to be silenced. So, guys, now, this is a 200 IQ move here. I don't like to do this often, but if there's circles on the ground like that, my suggestion, don't stand in them. Now, the other thing the boss will do, she'll do a Glaive Storm. She'll throw out a ginormous Glaive, the Cat Lady, that'll hit the wall. It'll split into three. Those three will hit the wall, and they will split into three more. And those three, after that, they'll stop. Don't get hit by them. Dear Lord, mythic progression on this. People cannot avoid that ability. It was the easiest... Anyways, guys, save your cooldowns for this phase. I made the big mistake of using them in phase one, and it actually almost got me killed. Blow your load as soon as Priest spawns up, and you should be perfectly fine. Don't stand in the beacons. Don't get hit by the glaives. This boss is really easy to do. Now, next, we are moving on to the Desolate Host, which in my opinion is the hardest boss currently to solo. Now, you can see around the room, you have those spiritual fonts. Those are going to be key later. Now, the problem with this boss, you have the living realm and the spirit realm. In each realm, you have the main boss, the engine in the living, the priestess in the spirit realm. Now, when you're not in one of these realms, for example, I'm not in spirit realm, the priestess is casting an ability called, I'm ready for this, I'm about to pronounce this, I got this, Quitus. You can see it there. I think I pronounced it right. Essentially, it's just this big damage on you that every time she casts it, she gains a, a stack of a buff, which increases its damage. However, this debuff can time out. More on that later. So, save your DPS cooldowns for 30% health when the, he ejects the Desolate Host. It is vital that you, you need your DPS cooldowns for that phase. You need to blow up the bosses at that point. So, once you start the fight, you have the adds. Go ahead, cleave them down. They don't do too, too much. Yeah, I do recommend killing them, passively cleaving them down. Get rid of them. They do some damage. It's better to get rid of them early on before the engine of soul spawns. Now, try and stay in the living room for as long as possible for the first time. And once you can't take any more damage, go ahead, click the spiritual font. This will bring you to the spirit realm. You can see there on their boss, the Quidditch debuff, it's timing out. The engine of souls, however, is also doing it, but his stacks are lower. The Priestess debuff, as soon as her debuff times out, go ahead, heal yourself up if you have any sort of self heals. As soon as her debuff times out, you're going to want to go ahead, clear all ads, do as much damage as possible, 
click on the Spirit of Souls or the, the fucking Soul Fonts and go back into the living room. And you're gonna keep doing this until you get to 30% health. As soon as the boss hits 30% health, he's going to eject the Desolate Host, the actual boss. At this point, you also, by the way, save your defenses at this point. Pop everything, just like Harjitam, below your load. Cooldowns, Lust, Pot, everything. You need to kill the Soul Queen and the Engine of Souls, who share health with the Desolate Host, by the way. You need to kill those two before you die. This is the hardest point of the fight, and this is why I find this fight so difficult. Make sure you're using your defensives as well. Just nuke down the Engine of Souls and Soul Queen. Fuck everything else. You need to kill those two. However... As soon as the priestess and the engine dies and you're at, and if you're at a decent amount of health, you're pretty much done with the fight. The only other thing to know about the Desolate Host, he does two things. He spawns a circle, he also does a swirly. When he does a circle, just stand in it. Nothing you can do there. When he does the swirly, try and run- by the way, the Templars shoot green things out that knock you back. When he does the swirly, you want to try and run away as far as you can, but the boss will follow you. The further away, the less damage you take. The boss also gains a stacking buff that increases his damage done. So again, you need to kill him before he kills you. But once you get the engine Soul Queen dead, the fight's pretty much over, guys. It's that easy. <clears throat> Moving on to Mistress Sazen. Fuck this fight. Not now, but back then, fuck this fight. Mistress Sazen. This boss is a, it's a joke now. So, she's going to do a few things in phase one. Jellyfish. Circle. You stand in it, you get stunned. Don't do that. It's no goo. The only important thing to note for phase one is going to be the Abyss Stalker ads and their interaction with the Slicing Tornadoes. So, when they spawn, don't kill them right away. By the way, the Hydra Shot used to be a thing where the raid would soak it. At this point, you, you're soloing, so you're just going to have to take the full thing. It doesn't do a lot of damage. Just take it. When the ads spawn, do not kill them right away. When she does the ability Slicing Tornado, as soon as she finished casting that, go ahead, kill off the ads and they're going to spawn this green poop on the ground. Don't touch the poo-poo. If you stand in it, you won't be able to hit the boss. However, if the tornadoes hit it, they'll disappear. If you hit the tornadoes, by the way, you get knocked up and get a nasty dot on you. So just hide behind the green shit, and you'll be fine. And that'll bring you into phase two at 70% health, which she has three fish. She has the fish that spawns the purple poop. Don't stand in that. She has the fish that spawns the white lion down the middle, which in the footage here, you didn't see, but you also happens in phase three. And she also does a fish that does the suck, which I did not get footage of because I suck. Now, if that happens, that fish will have two circles around him. An inner circle and an outer circle. If you go into the inner circle, you're going to get sucked up and eaten. You're instantly dead. Don't be an idiot and do that. To get rid of him, those purple pools, you need to run into that and then run into the outer circle. And he's going to suck it up off you. After he sucks up three pools, he's going to fuck off and go away. Simple enough. If that happens, honestly though, you probably DPS the boss into phase three, which happens at 40% before that even happens. Again, the only other thing to note for phase two, the only way you could possibly die, if I could even think of a way, is when the white line spawns, which you'll see in a second in phase three. When the white line spawns, a giant whale is going to come across the room. You get hit by that, you, you're probably dead. Don't, don't get hit by that. It's a big obvious line. Now, same thing with phase three, but wait, wait, wait. There's the white line. Guys, look at it. It's a big blue line, white line, whatever. Don't stand in it. Don't fucking stand in it. When the Abyss Stalker has spawned, just like phase one, don't kill them right away. Go ahead, dot them up, start cleaving them down very lightly. Again, once she does the Slicing Tornado cast and finish that cast, go ahead, kill the Abyss Stalkers. But to be honest, guys, you could probably kill her before she even does the Slicing Tornadoes. I probably could have, but I suck. Remember, box of cheese, it's better than Feral Drew than me. This boss is a joke. Just don't get hit by the tornadoes. Don't get hit by the giant whale in the middle. You're done. Moving on. Simple. Moving on to my personal favorite boss, unpopular opinion, Tomb of Sargeras. I really enjoyed Maiden. <laughs> oh, I'm kidding. This boss sucked. Anyways, it's really easy to do now. Now, there's two things with the Maiden. One thing. You have a giant glory hole in the middle. Now, no, no, I guess it is two things. Well, one thing that interacts with the other. So you have the glory hole in the middle. Now, she's also going to put colors on you. You're either the yellow color or you're the green color. If you touch any other ability that's the opposite color, you get a bomb on you. Or if she does mass instability like she did there, you get a bomb on you. Now, what you used to have to do when the bomb is about to explode, you have to jump in the middle and that would blow you back up. However, as you can see there, if you do that, the boss is going to reset. So what are you going to do about that? I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to grow a 12 inch penis and you're going to eat that bomb. That's it. If you have any charge or leap, charge back to the boss, you'll be fine. Even if not, if you have to take the fall damage, guys, it's not that much damage. You just have to, don't go into the middle. Now, once she ports away and stuns you, if you have the yellow, you want to collect the yellow orbs. You have the green debuff, you want to collect the green debuffs. This um, is going to give you a buff that stacks all the way up to 10 that increases your damage. By the way, don't use your cooldowns on the pole. Save them for this part. 
As soon as she does that, as soon as you have your 10 stacks, blow your load and just DPS her down. Now, I interrupted her there. I highly recommend don't interrupt her there at the last second. You want to do it at the last second. If she, while she's casting that, it basically does taking damage. However, the damage is very minimal. If she finishes the cast, whatever, she's going to one shot you. So interrupt her before she finishes the cast. But if she's casting that, she's going to do none of the other abilities. Therefore, you could kill her quicker. So you're not always getting knocked up. But knowing me, guys, box of cheese, it's smarter than me. I'm an idiot. So I interrupted her and just had to deal with the other guys. Guys, even if you do interrupt her, though, let's be honest, it's not that big of a deal. There's really no chance of dying on this fight. The only way you could fuck this fight up is if you jump in the middle with the bombs and reset it. This fight really is a joke. Go ahead, nuke her down. Let's move on to an actually more interesting fight, which I made, again, made complicated for myself. Let's move on to Avatar, the Fallen Avatar. So... You have the boss, you also have the Maiden of Valor. Now, you can see over there on the right, those lights are lighting up green. After a few seconds, it's going to shoot a beam into the boss, and it's going to give him energy. You want to drag the Maiden over there so she gets the energy first. Now, the boss transitions into Phase 2 in two ways. First one, which is the more common one, obviously, is if the boss gets 100 energy, which you do not want right away. The other way he transitions, if you DPS him down to 20% health, he will automatically transition into Phase 2. Now, if the Maiden of Valor is still alive while he transitions into Phase 2, he's going to eat her health pool and heal. You don't want that. Probably. You don't want that, guys. So, go ahead, drag the Maiden into the beam, and you'll be fine. Now, I made this more complicated on myself. I started dotting up the Maiden, thinking I needed to cleave her down alongside with the boss. To be honest, guys, you don't have to do that. Once the Maiden, you'll see here in a second, once she uh, drag her into the beam... Once the Maiden reaches 100 energy, she's going to get an Absorb Shield on her that you need to break. She's also going to do a long channel. After you break this Absorb Shield, it's going to do 25% of her health in damage. You'll see here, there's the shield. I go ahead and DPS it down. It does 25% of her health in damage. So, you could get four Absorb Shields before she goes ahead and offs herself. Now, I was afraid I was going to do too much damage to the boss and push him before the maiden was dead and he would just eat her and heal up guys the boss has a lot of health so what you could do is go ahead dps the boss down to 30 percent health then just take all your damage and nuke the maiden down and you'll be fine you'll transition perfectly now the only other two th there's two more things to know you have the shadowy blades here essentially you just spawn these, spawn these three blades and when they go out they're just gonna do some damage and knock you back by the way keep dragging that maiden into the beam you always want to keep that maiden in the beam you don't want the boss to transition early with the maiden up now, the other thing to note is the Unbound Chaos, as you can see here, Julio marked, and it'll spawn Swirlies on the ground. First of all, during progression, people were idiots and sucked at avoiding that. They were a joke. But right now, it doesn't matter. They do about negative two damage. I might as well heal you. You could stand in them. Don't worry about it. So, you can see here, the mana gets very low. I've finished her last cleansing protocol. The boss transitions, added a good amount of health, about 36% HP. He's goes. He's going to go ahead, deep dig the floor, and you're going to drop down into the bottom. Now, guys, I'm going to be honest. With a good amount of gear, the boss could be at 100% health, and you could do this perfectly fine. However, that's still a little bit risky. Now, first things first, go ahead, drag the boss into the corner. You'll see why in a second. He's going to do one other thing, which is going to... By the way, the Desolate cast, I forgot to go over this. In Phase 1, if you're taking too many stacks of Desolate, just run away from the boss and wait for your stacks to drop. He'll just do a pulsing AoE, however, your stacks will drop the Desolate cast. In Phase 2, however, you cannot drop this. Now... He's going to put a mark on you, the purple circle you saw around me. It's going to knock you up. Just try, don't get knocked into the lava. Use whatever charges you have to get back down. The reason why you want to drag him into the corner is for this cast here. It's going to be the Rupture Realities. It's going to destroy the platform. And basically, if you're standing in the lava for a long period of time, it will just do ever-increasing ticking damage to you to the point where you die. By the way, there's that purple ring there, the mark that knocks me up. Again, charges, leaps, anything, or just don't get knocked into the lava. You're fine. Again, just a reminder for Phase 1, if you're taking too many stacks of Desolate, just run away from the boss and wait for the stacks to drop. Now, let's move on to Kill Jaden. Kill Jaden is all about keeping your stacks of Fell Claws low. Now, how you do this, you may ask. You're only one person. What do? However, not however, there's one way to deal with this. You need movement speed. I'm pretty sure every class has some kind of movement speed or something they could use to avoid fell claws here. You only need to avoid it for a few seconds. So as soon as he does it, just pop whatever you have and start kiting around. You do not need to kite him through the entirety of his buff. 
By the way, Fell Claws can be dodged if you're like an agility class. You can dodge and not get hit by it. Now, the first one for the fight doesn't really matter. You can honestly take off five if you want. By the way, the Armageddon soaks, I recommend not soaking at all. I'll go into that more during the intermission. So you can see here, he does Fell Claws. As soon as he does it, there's only a few seconds left of the debuff. So I kite until the debuff drops. And at that point, it does not matter if I get hit. So guys, save all movement speed increases for Fell Claws and just kite until your stack drop. He's also going to do the Rupturing Singularities, the purple balls. Just be close to them. When they land, they're going to do a ginormous knockback. As long as you're close to them, especially on normal mode, you'll be perfectly fine. Just keep an eye out for them. Just don't be directly under them because I think they could still kill you or one-shot you. Now, the Armageddons, by the way, save your cooldowns on the pull. Use them all in phase two as this is when you're most likely to die during this phase. The Armageddons, I actually recommend not soaking. Now, the reason for that is all three are going to hit. Two are going to hit anyways. If all three hit, you're just going to take a burst of damage. It's not that high. However, if you soak one, you're going to get a 50 second dot. Not soaking, you only get a 30 second dot. Now, in phase two, he's going to make you big, and he's gonna, you're going to spawn this ad that just do a cast with ever-increasing damage every time they cast. Guys, the damage they do, though, is very minimal. It's kind of a joke. So, what I recommend for the ads, just passively cleave them then. You'll be perfectly fine. By the way, make sure you do drag the boss into the corner as that makes it easier to kite him around the platform for the fell claws. I actually make that mistake a few times where I do forget to uh, bring him to the edge and kite him around. Now, just a reminder, I, the uh, bursting and focused dread flames. I, will, I do actually want to talk about that. Now, <laughs> I don't know why I want to talk about it. They're fucking jokes. They do zero damage, dude. Don't worry about that shit. Anyways, guys, this phase, just blow all your cooldowns. Kill the boss. This phase, you're most likely to die. And by the way, the rupturing singularities can happen in that phase. Once he has 40% health, he'll go into the intermission, he'll spawn the ads, your screen will go dark. You need to find Illidan, who likes to hang around the edges of the room. Or you could be a hunter or feral druid and track him. Go ahead and find him, run into him. You're going to get a 20-second buff, which allows you to kill the ads, which just do a cast, which does a small tick of damage, and teleports them. Now, there's five ads. Once you kill all five ads, the phase ends, phase three starts. However, I didn't do this during my kill, but what you're going to want to do, kill four of the ads and leave the last one up. By the way, you're going to need to refresh your debuff. Leave the last ad up and wait for your DPS cooldowns to come up for phase three. There's no reason not to. They do very minimal damage. You might as well wait for your DPS cooldowns in phase three. As soon as phase three starts, he's going to do his first darkness of a thousand souls cast. Guys, this cast does very, very little damage. However, if you're struggling with this, the first one's going to hit you no matter what. If you're struggling with this, I'll show you how to get rid of that later on. By the way, I could have easily kited for Felclaws here. Let's be honest. By the way, the Terror Rift will eventually start sucking you in. But damn, look at that skybox, dude. This fight, a lot of people didn't like this fight, but this phase, I got excited for it every single time just so I could look at that. Anyways, phase three is all about kiting Felclaws and also the demonic oblets. You can see there in the back left corner. What they do is they're going to start glowing green and they're going to shoot out these beams and across. If you get hit by one of these beams, you're going to take... I don't know, I didn't get hit you, so the damage, let's be honest, at this point probably isn't that high, but it's not the damage you should be worried about. You're also going to knock you back. And honestly, if you're, obviously, if you're this close to the edge of a platform because you are you need the kite for fell claws, you're probably going to get knocked off. So simple, guys. They're in a cross pattern. Up, down, left, right. Don't get hit. So phase three, all about kiting fell claws, all about not getting hit by the demonic obelisk. You'll still have your bursting and focus shred flame, which do very little damage. Just use a personal cooldown if you need to, guys. They're... They really don't do that much damage. Now, the only other thing to note, if your damage sucks, which I can't believe I avoided the second one, I could have avoided the second one, I want to show you what to do about Darkness of a Thousand Souls. So you have the Terror Rifter that's slowly sucking you in into that circle. Now, what he's going to do, Kill Jaden's going to run to the center of the platform there. And there he goes, starting to do the Darkness of a Thousand Souls cast. Once he's about, I don't know, about 80% done with the cast, maybe 9% if you've got fucking big balls, go ahead and run into the Terror Rift. You'll completely avoid the damage of that, and it'll be perfectly fine. But to be honest, guys, it's, pro it's really unnecessary. You could probably even kill him before the Darkness of a Thousand Souls comes out. And honestly, guys, that's it. You just soloed normal Tomb of Sargeras. This is my first wide video, and not counting my uh, Cutting Edge Gahoon video, in over a month. My first guide in over a month. I really hope you guys enjoyed. I really hope this helped you. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I love you all.